Even though I've been working on Mars for a year, I still can't get over how different the sky looks from here. It's odd to see two moons every night. It's only strange because you're an Earthman. Professor Zephyr, I've located a comet. It's between us and Jupiter. Is it a large one? The biggest I've ever seen. It's entering the asteroid belt. Let me see it for myself. It looks to me as if the comet's going to hit one of the asteroids. It has hit it. Oh, well. The excitement's ended for one evening. That comet hit the asteroid with such force it might have knocked it out of its orbit. Would that matter? It means the asteroid would follow a different path round the sun. You sound worried, Professor. I have a strange feeling that you'd better check the new orbit the asteroid has taken. I can't. Our computer is being serviced. Then beam a message to Earth and ask space headquarters to check it. Marla? Yes, Colonel Raven? Why in space have I been sent this information about an asteroid? I'm head of the United Galactic Organization, not a stargazer. The communication to which you allude is from a friend of yours, Professor Zephyr. Old Zeph! Why didn't you say so before? Now, why would he send me this stuff about an asteroid? He thinks it's important. Well, you'd better do what he wants. Get a complete forecast on the asteroid's new path. Jump to it, Marla. With alacrity, Colonel. I don't like the look of this. No wonder Zeph sent me that message. Marla, I want to know where the asteroid will be when Mars is at the height of its northern midsummer. I'll ask Space Survey to put it on your screen. Good. Then come in. As I thought. The asteroid's dead set to hit Mars seven months from now. Do you know what that means, Marla? Yes, Colonel. Devastation. Seven months from now, Wotan, the Martian capital, will be blown sky high. Is the asteroid big enough to do so much damage? It's 50 miles in diameter, and it's approaching Mars at 18 miles per second. It'll pack a punch equivalent to 300 megatons of explosive. Nothing will be left of Wotan. We've got to find a way of stopping the asteroid from hitting Mars. Marla, will you get me... Professor Haggerty? Of course I will, Colonel. Now, how in space did you know I wanted to talk to him? A Venusian has the facility to anticipate what her employer wants. <laughs> I suppose on Venus there's no such thing as a dumb blonde. That is quite correct, Colonel. And now I will call Professor Haggerty for you. I'm sure my experiment is going to work after all. Come over here, Cassapir, and look at it. What is it, Pop? It's a special kind of Rhode Island hen which I've made. And don't call me Pop. Sorry, I forgot. Well, what's so special about this hen? It lays square eggs. That'll make them much easier to pack. The farmers will be delighted. Honestly, you and your inventions. Well, I can't be a serious scientist all the time. I must have a bit of relaxation. Switch on the video screen, Cassapier. Yes, Pop. And I wish you'd call me Cassie. I need your help, Professor. An asteroid is heading towards Mars, and we've got to find a way of stopping it. I'm a scientist, Colonel. How can I help you with this? I don't know. I was hoping you'd come up with some crazy Irish idea. Well, I'll do my best. My name is not Aloysius O'Brien or Rock Haggerty for nothing. The asteroid is getting closer to us. And there's still no news from the United Galactic Organization. I think it will be advisable to tell the president to evacuate the capital. He wants to wait until the last moment. He's afraid that people might panic. Professor Haggerty wishes to talk to you, Colonel. 
Put them on the screen, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Colonel, that uh, this asteroid has me beaten. I, I can't think of a single way of stopping it. Oh, well, it was just a try. We've had the top brains on Earth, Mars, and Venus working on the problem, and none of them have come up with an answer. I'm deeply sorry. Still, I'm a scientist, not a demolition man. And demolition? I, I've just thought of something. What? Come on, Haggerty, out with it. Do you have a space patrol crew willing to risk their lives to save the Martian capital? All my space crews are willing to give their lives in the course of duty. Very well, then. Here's what I think. After going through space in a galosphere, it certainly makes a change to drive through the city in a monobile. I prefer the galosphere. Well, you better tell Raven you know what you leave. I'm sure he'd be delighted to send you out with another space patrol crew. You are joking, Captain. This is the first leave we have had in a whole year, and I am going home to Venus. Would you care to accompany me? Well, thanks for the offer, Slim, but for the next eight weeks, all I intend to do is take it easy and fish. But uh, why don't you come fishing with me? I do not like fish. Well, you don't have to eat them. Then there is no point in catching them. Ah, you Venusians are so logical. You are wanted on the radio phone. <sighs> There's no peace for the wicked. Captain Larry Dart here. Who's calling? This is a robot control at space headquarters. Please report to Colonel Rayburn immediately. But he sent me on leave. I am sorry. Please report to Colonel Rayburn immediately. You know what he wants to see me about? I do not know. Please report to Colonel Rayburn. There's one thing I don't like about robots. You can't argue with them. You cannot argue with Rayburn either. And I have a feeling he will be canceling our leave. I've got the same feeling. You better go to the restroom and wait for me there. There's one thing I like about Earth, and that's the food. If only they knew how to make Martian sausages. Still, I'll soon be home on Mars and eating as many sausages as I like. I regret to say that might not be true, Husky. By this time tomorrow, you will probably be in the Galosphere again. Don't be ridiculous. We're on leave. I think our leave is being cancelled. Colonel Rayburn has asked to see Dark. If Dart's going on another mission, he'll have to go without me. Ah, Captain, is it true our leave's been cancelled? It hasn't been cancelled, Husky, but there's a special job to do, and Rayburn's asked me if I'd volunteer for it. Did you volunteer? Yes, I did. What sort of job? Blowing up an asteroid. Who'd want to bother blowing up an asteroid? They don't do any harm. This one is heading straight for the capital of Mars. What? My capital? Then I'm coming with you. What about your leave? I thought you wanted it. How can I care about leave at a time like this? What about it, Slim? You want me to find somebody to take your place? That is a suggestion of nonsensical import. Where you and Husky go, I will go too. Good. I'd feel lost without hearing your slangy way of talking. Now you both wait here till I contact you. I'm going to Rayburn's office for my final briefing. Go on, Husky. You had better finish the rest of the food. In the Galosphere, we only have space rations. I don't want any food. Thinking about that asteroid has made me lose my appetite. Professor Sepper, Earth is calling you on the sonar beam. At last. Well, Colonel, what news? There's only one way of stopping the asteroid. We must blow it up. Blow it up? But that's impossible. It's the only way. My best space patrol crew have volunteered to try and explode the asteroid before it reaches you. If they can't pull it off, no one can. Everyone on Mars will be trying for their success. This is it, Dart. If you fail, the whole of OTAN will be destroyed and a million people will be homeless. I know that, sir. I don't just want you to blow up the asteroid. You've got to destroy it completely. Why? Even small pieces of it can do damage if they fall on Mars. I'll make sure nothing's left of the asteroid. Good. You'll need a load of dynamite. So you'll have to tow it along in a space freighter. Do we pick the freighter up from the moon? We don't keep explosives on the moon. You'll have to take it from here. Pulling a freighter out of Earth's gravity will slow our galosphere. It can't be helped. The freight ship has been loaded, Colonel Rayburn. 
It is linked to Gallosphere 347 and is ready for takeoff. Well, Colonel, I'm off. Goodbye, Dart, and good luck. You check off first, Slim. Galaxy 024 calling central control. Closing inner vacuum door. Central control to Galaxy 024. Inner vacuum door now closed. Primary drive functioning. Check. Orbital drive on. Check. Interplanetary overdrive on. Everything ready, Captain. Fine. Husky? Orbital speed zero to 20,000 miles an hour. Speed maintained. Scan of you are working. Check. Astro beam working. Check. Gamma rays on. Yoma rays on. All in order, Captain. I'm ready. Thanks. Gallosphere 024 to central control. Ready for final check. Automatic course control on. Check. Gravity freezing cabin, on. Check. Mesen power, on. All in order. Ready to lift. Takeoff program starting now. Dart and his crew will be successful. They have a 50-50 chance. It won't be difficult to plant the explosives on the asteroid. The main thing is for them to do it before it's too late. Space headquarters are flashing us, Captain. Colonel Rayburn here. Gallus 347 receiving you. Come in, please. There's been no word from you since takeoff. Why the silence? Nothing to report, sir. We're cruising at 500,000 miles an hour. Increase your speed. The asteroid's getting closer to Mars with every second. There's no time to waste. Every time I look out, the asteroid grows bigger. The space patrol won't reach it for another 12 hours. Why don't you rest, Professor? I can't. The president is coming to see me. Do you think Colonel Rayburn's scheme will work? I have grave doubts. An asteroid is not an easy thing to blow up. And then I will order Wotan to be evacuated. If we cannot save the city, we can at least save the people. There it is. I've sighted the asteroid. What a size. In space, size cannot be calculated. We already know this is 50 miles in diameter. If we have to plant all of it with explosives, we're gonna need seven league boots. We'll be using our hover jets for this job. I've got to tell Rayburn we've sighted the target. Captain Dart is calling you. Mars has blocked our view of the Gallosphere, but we are receiving him on the solar beam. We've sighted the asteroid, and we're preparing to land. Fine. From now on, Mars Observatory will be following you on their screen. Good luck, Dart. Gallosphere rapidly approaching target area. In one minute, 32 seconds, we'll go into orbit. Our speed is cut to a hover, Captain. Prepare for landing. Asteroid, here we come. That was a sweet landing. I didn't feel a bump. That's because there's hardly any gravity. No atmosphere, no gravity. An asteroid's just a rocky nothing. I'm going to look around. Stand by till I give the all clear. Release the anchor lines on the freighter and come out. We've got to secure it before we can unload the explosives. Anchor lines released. 
I never thought that would happen. What's wrong, Captain? There isn't enough gravity to make the lines drop down. Can't we get up there on the hover jet? It's too high. What can we do? Give me a moment to think. There isn't much time for thinking. The asteroid is getting nearer and nearer. There must be some way of pulling the freighter down. What about using our iron gun? It's worth a try. It won't work if there's much gravity, but it should be all right here. I've never used an iron gun, Captain. They're mostly used in space for getting from one ship to another. There goes Slim now. Hey, take it easy. Don't fire the gun too many times or you'll go past the freighter. I hope Slim hurries. Time's getting short. Don't remind me. Slim's coming, Captain. It's a good thing Rayburn can't see us on his video screen. He'd be furiable at such a waste of time. The Martian Observatory is watching us, Husky, and that's just as bad. The space crew have been on the asteroid two hours, and they've done nothing. You saw yourself the trouble they had landing the freight ship. Even so, they should already be unloading. They've just begun. Wonderful, wonderful. The experiment has been a great success, and I got a square egg at last. Mm, the trouble is, it's got no yolk. And that's the part everybody likes best. Ah, well, I'll keep on trying. Professor Zephyr is trying to contact you from Mars, but your video screen is not working. Of course it's working. Your video screen is not working. I repeat, not working. I repeat, not working. If you don't stop repeating yourself, you won't be working in a minute either. Uh, you're quite right. I've left the switch off. Uh, uh, sorry about the delay, Zephyr. Uh, what did you want to tell me? I, I thought you'd like to know that the Gallisphere has landed on the asteroid and they have just unloaded the dynamite. Just unloaded it? What took them so long? They had trouble with the freighter. Ha! Sure, and all those space crews have more muscle than brain. They should have had me along to help them. You should have volunteered to go with them. I'm sure Raymond would have sent you. Me? Go up in space? Oh, I was only joking. I get air sick on a hover jet, let alone a galaxier. But joking apart, I'm worried about the time it's taking Dart to get started. If that asteroid isn't blown up soon, it'll be too late. Yeah, that's worrying me, too. If it gets much closer to my planet, the explosion will do almost as much damage as the asteroid itself would have done. Well, keep me informed how things are getting on. As we drill a hole, Slim, you plant the explosive. Dot, look at Mars. It's got bigger. It is impossible to work any faster. That's what worries me. This asteroid's made of a rock we've never come across before. The gamma guns can hardly break it up. Pity we can't plant the explosives on it instead of in it. We might not destroy the whole of the asteroid that way. And even a small piece of it could cause a crater a mile wide. There. Another hole to fill, Slim. And another. I wish I'd told Dart to keep in touch with me on the sonar beam. If they were in difficulties, I'm sure he would notify you. The last charge is in, Captain. In a few moments, the asteroid will be disintegrated. Disintegrated, Husky, disintegrated. I'm setting the fuse to blow three minutes from now. You better cast off the freighter. You better go too, Slim. I will wait for you. No, you won't. There's something wrong with the fuse, and it might take a while to fix it. Husky and I will not leave without you. I'm the captain, and I give the orders. The Gallosphere's got to be away from here before the asteroid blows up. But I... Look, there's no time to argue. Get going. If I don't join you in three minutes, take off. Yes, Captain. What a time for the fuse to get temperamental. If I can't fix it, I'll have to blow the thing by hand. 
two of the crew are in the galosphere, but the third still on the asteroid. Something must have gone wrong. The asteroid will soon be in our atmosphere. It's got to be destroyed now. Two minutes to go, and it's still not working. If Dark doesn't return soon, we will have to leave him. Never. I'll bring him back even if I have to carry him. You can't. If the timing meter will not work, Dart will blow the fuse by hand. It is his life or the total destruction of your capital. I would rather a whole city was destroyed than have anything happen to Captain Dart. So would I. But we have our orders and so has he. There are 60 seconds to go. Time for takeoff. I am closing out the vacuum door. Wait. I can hear something. Hurry. Switch on primary drive. There is something wrong, Captain. I cannot increase speed. Switch on meson power. It is dangerous to use meson power before we go into orbit. It'll be even more dangerous if we're not away from the asteroid before she blows. Switch on the meson power. We've got 34 seconds to go. Meson power on. Our speed is still too slow. How far do we have to be from the asteroid before we're safe? If we're anywhere within a 250 mile radius, we'll be blasted out of the skies. How long before the explosion? 20 seconds. What can be wrong with the galosphere? I think we're carrying too much weight. Then I will go. I am the big one, and if I... Look, don't be crazy. Your weight's nothing. It's the freighter. Cast it off, Husky. Why did I not think of that? The freighter's gone, Captain. Our speed's rising. Watch the screen. We'll soon be seeing the fireworks. Mars is safe. Oh, what a relief. You can say that again. I will. What a relief. And you know something? I'm hungry. Galosphere 347 calling Colonel Rayburn, Space Patrol Headquarters. Our mission has been successfully completed, and we're returning to Earth. 